Hey everyone, Advanced and Tech Tano here, <laughs> the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new chairlift record, Moth. Chairlift, American synth pop duo, they've been at it for over 10 years now. They have three records under their belt, and the amount of progression from their first record to their latest is pretty apparent when you go back and listen to that debut record and hear how amateurish kind of quirky it is. It's like a night and day difference from this very clean, slick, commercial record of theirs that they have just released. Now the duo was in the midst of this transition on their last full-length album, Something, which dropped in 2012. The album, I thought, was occasionally bland, but it had some good songs. Plus, frontwoman Caroline Polachek is one of the better female singers when it comes to these new, trendy, synth pop indie flavored male female duos. I didn't know much about this album going into it, and to be honest, I didn't expect too much. I mean, something I thought was a decent, it was a solid record, but much of it hasn't really stuck with me over the past several years. However, with this new LP over here, I think like Chairlift is maybe, at least with some of the tracks, making a little bit more of an impression on me. This record has a no BS build. The songs on this thing are like from two to four minutes. 10 tracks. It's pure, unadulterated pop with very clear, direct choruses and verses. But it has a bit of class. It's very subtle. It's very soft on the ears. Aesthetically, it sounds like it would go over really well playing over the loudspeaker in like a Forever 21 or something. But there's more to this album beyond its kind of cushy, smooth, ethereal production. For one, Caroline delivers some good vocal performances on this thing. Her voice strikes me as very pretty, very soft on the ears. At moments reminds me a bit of Julia Holter on her latest record. You guys must know at this point how much I loved that last year. I love on the opening track here, not only are a lot of Caroline's vocal lines very, very melodic, very beautiful, but I love the uh, very sharp shouts of, I look out! that slice through the walls of very airy synthesizers and soft horns. And there are these really driving guitars playing very quietly in the background. It's like listening to a mix of 2000s era indie pop mixed with a bit of 80s new wave. And I do mean that in the best way possible. Caroline's vocals are very cool, but confident on the song Polymorphing, uh, a track that is quiet, but is also very Funky has this miniature little playful groove to it that I like a lot with some horns that are kind of sassy. It's sort of like I'm listening to a, a very quiet tom-tom club. And then her vocals soar over the very bright synthesizers on the song Romeo. And, and her vocals are kind of matched with these oddly sexual moans uh, right after she sings the hook, which are kind of strange, but uh, uh, ear grabbing. The buzzing guitars that, that build into the verse on this song uh, give the track a bit of edge to. Now the production generally is not as rough and as textured and as flavorful as I would like. Uh, certainly not enough to make this album super fiery, bold, and exciting. But I can hear that little odd details are being placed into these very soft, sweet songs to kind of give them a, a distinct character against so much music out there right now that sounds like this. There is something to listen to beyond Chairlift's ultra clean and shiny exterior. And not just sonically, but musically too. There's some really pretty counterpoint, especially from the horns coming through on the song Cha-Ching, some very cool metallic bits of percussion as well. And there's some really rubbery, bouncy sub bass on this track at one point. Uh, it's kind of like Chairlift is nodding to the idea of making a banger, but they're really not going hard enough for the song to be that. However, the track Moth to Flame is, is this album's true dance anthem. It has a driving house beat, and I actually wish more tracks on this record were as lively. The song Crying in Public is a very soft ballad on this record, but it's packed with all these sparkling layers of tones on the chorus, and it has one of the better vocal melodies on the entire LP. And there's some kind of weird, noisy, glitchy samples that are, that are looped in a very, I don't know, herky-jerky kind of way on the song Ottawa to Osaka. One of the odder tunes on the entire record, but I still admire it for taking a risk that so many other tracks on this album don't. Which kind of brings up my main issue with this LP, and maybe it was an issue I had with Chairlift's last album too, 
And that's that there are some interesting experiments and ideas on this thing, but they're all so faint to the point where they sort of just blend into the homogeneously smooth aesthetic of the entire album, which makes the record sort of breezy and sleepy to me, you know, not something I'm really excited to listen to. It's it's very much background music, background pop, uh, sophisticated and occasionally interesting, background pop, but it sort of falls into the, again, background for me. Chairlift isn't so much a duo for me that reads as exciting and fun and just euphoric. Uh, instead, they're just kind of really playing it laid back and cool. And maybe that's uh, what you want to hear. Personally, I would have liked a few more upbeat tracks and for the duo to just not sound like uh, they're shying away from coming off too aggressive because they don't want to alienate anybody. I enjoy the meatier cuts on the second half of this record, especially like the song Show You Off, which is easily the sexiest track on the entire record, where we have Caroline Polachek singing about taking serious pride in her lover. The track features this kind of funky Michael Jackson S groove, while there's a bit of modern instrumentation in there that kind of reads like the new Carly Rae Jepsen album, and again, in a good way. The slower and more abstract, more obtuse cuts in the track listing here are nowhere near as satisfying, especially on the song Unfinished Business, where the vocals are kind of raw, but sort of feeble as well, as Caroline goes through these vocal movements that at times read like Bjork, but not quite as stunning. And the last track here is easily the most indulgent in the bunch, and it's sort of like listening to every odd and slightly experimental idea executed on the previous tracks held within these really sharp pop songs, all thrown together to sort of collide into a very unmemorable junk pile to close out the album in a really unsatisfying manner. But at least a majority of the tracks leading up to this point were good. Overall, I thought this record was decent. You know, certainly some of Chairlift's best material to date on this thing, and I think they're continuing to mature while simultaneously taking a few risks here and there, but I just wish this album would kind of take the plunge rather than sort of just you know, dip its toes, looking very fashionable in its really expensive swimsuit, and it has its hair done, and has some really sweet sunglasses and everything, and it's just kind of chilling on the side of the pool. I personally am looking for the pop record that's gonna go, Cannonball! Ah! <laughs> Hopefully that uh, puts my feelings accurately uh, about this album. Still a decent record though, and if you're looking for a nice, breezy, sweet indie pop record to kick off your 2016, I see no reason not to check this out. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran. Oh, Zishit. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Smash that like. Ride your bike. You the best. And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, chairlift forever.